Hi guys and welcome back to Wade's Workshop and this is going to be part two of the tooling plate. Can I just start by saying yes I did realise my uh, editing faux pas in the part one in having that sort of double clip of the new stuff coming into the shop. Um, normally I'll watch a video through, um, this was one of those late at night ones when it was like okay right we're there, put it up on YouTube. Um, so it slipped through the net as it were, so I do apologise for that. But I'm sure most of you just fast forward through it. You don't want to watch the same sort of four minutes of clip twice. Um, apologies. OK, so as usual, start with new arrivals. Now, I did say in the part one, um, I have got some more things coming in. Um, and some things have arrived, but I'm not sort of ordering anything from here on in or, or expecting anything. I might have one or two things still about to arrive. Um, stuff I've been waiting for for some time. So let's start with, oh, viewer gift. Um, now, I don't know how I've ever lived without one of these. Uh, Bob from Devon, thank you so much. Um, I didn't, I've seen somebody make something similar to this. I didn't know they were commercially available. Um, Evolution brand, I've got an Evolution chop saw. And yeah, you know, I've probably shown it in videos, not for some time. But yeah, I didn't know that these were available. And well, it's a magic stick. Um, yeah, I've had so much fun with this. Um, let me get through the end of this clip and I'll show you guys what it's for. Okay, um, clunk, <laughs> right. Another thing that's arrived, a couple of three quarter inch thick, 150 mil square aluminium plates. Um, aluminium, well, I, they didn't cost me a lot of money, but I've got, oh, a pair of them. Um, I'm sure they're going to be useful. I have got a use for one of them, that's why I ordered it, and I thought, well, I'll order two while I'm at it. Um, I'm going to sort of, it's a little project that's going to come after this one, but yeah, I've got the materials. The project I'm on at the moment, this tooling plate, is pretty much finished as we stand, um, as I'm recording this intro. So, um, yeah, but obviously you've got a lot more videos to see, a lot more clips to see before we get to that stage. So, plenty more videos coming, I can assure you guys. Right, so that's that. Um, nothing else has arrived as far as, I'm, uh, far as I'm away. So, let me show you this uh, magic stick. I'm giving you a lovely shot of the floor of Aid's workshop. Now, I have staged this because I've already been around cleaning up with this pretty much awesome weapon. Um, right, so... It's a magnet on a stick with a with a plunger. So basically, I believe there's some magnets inside. Uh, where are we? There's some magnets inside here. Obviously, when you pull the plunger out, the magnet draws back into the handle, and this, being stainless, is no longer magnetic. Anything you pick up falls off. So let me just demonstrate. Um, yeah, a little bit staged, guys. But yeah, a load of swarf on the floor. I just had to put it somewhere where you could see it. And as you can see, can you see? Yeah, that's all stuck on the end. And basically, let me show, let me show. Yeah, I'll do it by my feet here. I can drop that swarf back on the floor again. There you are. And obviously, I won't leave it there. But yeah, for cleaning up around the machines, I've been around all my shelves, I've been around everywhere picking up swarf. And you'd be surprised how much that you sort of miss with a brush and a dustpan and what have you. Um, being round the mill machine, obviously I've got to be careful because of the, the rod will stick to the, to the bed and what have you, but cleaning up all the swarf around the benches, off the rubber mat on the mill, it's absolutely brilliant. And obviously, oh, I don't know whether you can see, I've got my bin there. <laughs> oh, we've all got a bin. So yeah, I'll just, there we are. All the swarf in the bin. So yeah, really chuffed with that. And Bob, thank you so much. Again, as I said, how did I ever live without one? And what's quite handy on my back wall? Here it is. <laughs> it's got somewhere to live. Temporarily, of course. But then, we've seen my temporarily before. So you quite often see when I'm on the mill, um, and just getting used to having a mill to start with, but you'll see this happening all the time, the arm coming in the way, and you know all this sort of thing as I'm doing handles. Um, I've just got a little set up here um, using the table and my little drill press and I got one of the you know my little universal vice um, but the shoe on the camera fits in there and I can pretty much point it into the back of the mill and uh, it keeps me out of the way or 
<laughs> I've done a few shots with it now, you probably haven't seen them yet, but it keeps my arm out of the way because it's back and I'm not trying to film over my shoulder from this sort of direction. So yeah, that's, <laughs> it was like, what have I got? I was thinking of making something and whatever, and I thought, hang on a minute. And obviously with this thing, um, yeah, I can sort of, you know, move it all around, uh, have a bit of a play with it. But yeah, it's just something I came up with, a use for that vice, which I don't use that often unless I'm sort of dressing small little items up. So that's enough rabbiting, I think, guys. Let's get on with part two, shall we? So a little rough sketch. Um, the block is 76.2 wide, and there's going to be holes in the center and every 15 mil, but they are coming down from the top, and I want to avoid them. So half of the block, 38.1, I've decided because there's a hole that's going to be the centre of the block. There's holes 15 mil out and 30 mil out. I'm going to split the difference and go 22 mil out from this, 22 and a half out from the centre, and then space them out 45 apart, and that puts me out of the way or smack between the tooling holes and the top of the plate. Okay, so that said, um, 76.2, 38.1 to the edge. I've done my little sketch there just to remind me. Um, so if I, from the edge, it's to the centre would be 38.1. I'll remove 22.5 from that gives me 15.6 add on the 1.25 is 16.85 so 16.85 from touch off on this end uh, is the first hole and the second one is 45 further on 61.85 um, yeah I probably would normally have done that in my head but I didn't want to get it wrong so let's just come over to the mill uh, I'm just going to touch off on this edge I've already found the centre this way. A lot easier with a DRO, of course. Getting close. Here we go, lock that. Right, I'll just set a zero on my dial. So, 16.85. So one turn is three. Six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen point five, sixteen point seven five, sixteen point eight five. Okay. So we'll start drilling holes. So that's the six point two mil drill. I've done the other hole and I've wound across 45 millimeters. On reflection, I probably should have done M5 in these, <coughs> and that would have given me a little bit more. Um, wall thickness where the counterfoil goes in but not to worry there is uh, there is clearance there it or not clearance there is meat left okay i just have to bring the head down a couple of turns that'll probably do me and we'll countersink the hole bring you back when we're done. I've just picked up the dead centre of this plate, or the centre of the slot, and the centre end per end. Not that fussy, because I am going to be machining the outside, but not the slot. So I'm going to drill and ream a 6mm hole through the centre. That's going to be my date dumper. All the holes on the top is a reamed hole that I can pick up on at a later date. Um, but I know if I've got that, I can then move side to side 22.5mm from there for the holes to take um, where is it? The holes to take my plate or my tenon. So if I've got a central datum, uh, a central datum hole, and I know I've got this edge, which is the edge of the tenon, um, I've got a reference point for everything I do on the top. So that's the next step: drill and ream hole in there, and then two tapped holes, 45 mil apart, about centre, um, at M6, 
And as I said earlier, they're going to be avoiding the holes on the top of the plate. So I tapped the first one using the plate as a guide. I bolted it down and again, I think I finished that. I've just used the plate as a guide again to tap the second hole. Okay. That's just loosely nipped in there. Hardly uh, clamped down at all. Just make sure I've got no high spots. A little oil stone that fits in there nicely. That's cool. Same on the end of the side of my block. I have broken the edges on here. Um, I did break them with a, a file earlier. Absolutely fine. Okay, so theoretically. That should now screw into there. Feeling good. Now I know these bolts are going to stick out on the back. Ow. Got a little splinter then. <laughs> tighten them down. couple of stainless steel allen bolts which I happen to have in stock so that's that screwed into there now I think at this point I am going to take it off I'm going to hold this in the vise I'm going to flip it over upside down and I'm going to try and fly cut across the entire top of the plate reason being why I'm not addressing this underside um, oh, I'm going to sit this face on a parallel, by the way, rather than sit on this face, which is an unknown. Um, I'll sit this face on a parallel because it's a known. Again, I might just make sure there's no high points on there. I have broken all the edges, but okay. Yeah, seems okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to machine across the top face and around the four outside edges well, the camera died on me folks <laughs> I didn't notice um, I'll just finish this off I'm roughing it out I'm very much roughing it out with this 12mm cutter just to flatten off this top face um, yeah the plan is to fly cut it um, so we'll, we'll see how we get on um, 12mm cutter, I'm stepping over 9mm at a time. And, yeah, I took a point one scratch off, it only covered about half the plate. Uh, I took another point one, I got about three quarters of the way across the plate. So I've taken another point one, and it's, yeah, it's cleaned up. So it was about point one, uh, point three mil to clean the plate up. That's to be expected. Uh, but because it sat on the parallel on the tenon, um, I know that this is sort of flat in relation to the tenon, but not to the underside of the plate. The underside of the plate is in fresh air at the moment, um, because it sat on a parallel on the bottom of the tenon in the vice. So I'm just going to have to take one more cut on here. Just the last couple of millimetres. But yeah, 12 mil cutter, I've been stepping over 9 mil at a time. Um, to take a load off the fly cutter perhaps, because there's going to be big diameter on the fly cutter, um, I think my fly cutter will do it. We shall see. So, Let's just uh, switch that off 
and go back to where I was when the camera died. So yeah, you, well, I was basically explaining that I was going to put this on here. Yeah, that's, you know, very much roughed out. Um, actually, it's bad considering. There's no steps that I can feel, which is good. And obviously, the patination's all in stripes, but yeah, it feels quite good. Um, obviously, the dowel hole's there, and these are the two screws, um, which have now been machined flat to the surface. So, anyway, that's, that's another story. So, yeah, while it's all in this orientation... I'm going to fly cut, a, fly cut. No, I'm going to fly cut across this space, um, or attempt to. I mean, I'll try it. If it if it doesn't like it, um, then I'll probably get, uh, you know, go over it with a 12 mil cutter, perhaps, and go in every direction possible. Um, I'd probably be able to lap that in. I would have thought, but uh, anyway, that's another story. Um, and I'm also going to go round to all four of the outside edges with it held in this orientation. And that will allow me, once it's finished, to flip it back over, put it on the table, clamp it on the table, and to be able to fly cut both sides with the tenon removed. Then I can put the tenon back in afterwards and think about machining the tenon to the right size for um, the table. I may do that when it's not in the plate. We'll, we'll see. I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's still a work in progress, and you know what I'm like. I make things up as I go along. So the next thing is to set up, do I set up a fly cutter or go around the outside edges now? What the hell, I'm going to set up a fly cutter, it's going to be good fun this. Nobody can say I'm not ambitious. Probably run a bit of compound on this, I think. one cut um, over the full width of that um, what is the width yeah 100 mil so basically I've got that fly cutter set to just over 100 mil I don't know what it's going to do when I start hitting on the trailing cut behaving itself. Did you call this pushing the limit? Not getting any scatter, which is uh, good news. Trying to keep an even speed by hand. No, I haven't got the, uh, the quill lock, so that probably isn't helping. I'm going to have to run back over the other way, maybe put a bow cut on.
Yeah, so the leading tub isn't biased with the load. Especially at this diameter. I think I'll uh, give it a good smearing in compound, give it a brush down now. Um, I did stop here while I turned the camera on. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll give it a good smearing in uh, cutting fluid just to be really nice to it. I may just show the oil stone to the cutter. Well, I won't just show it to it. I'll uh, <laughs> use it on it. <laughs> yeah, show the oil stone to the cutter. Oh, kick the camera. Yeah, there you are, cutter. There's an oil stone. <laughs> now I'll just uh, done a fair bit of work with this since I last. Rest it up. Yeah, just a little bit of honing. So if I set a zero there and just uh, that's a bit much. Point zero three. Okay. Just wind off a bit. I think I'll run that cut again. Try and be really gentle with it. As I said, guys, the, uh, the DRO and a power feed is on my uh, list. Um, DRO-wise, um, yeah, I was going to get one from Banggood. It looked good, the reviews are good, but you never know here with Banggood. Um, it's getting back to them when you've got a problem, and I know there's a few people that have been the same. So, yeah, they would have given it to me uh, as a demo. But, you know, by the time you go through all the effort of fitting it, it turns out to be rubbish. Um, I'd rather get one I know I can get replaced if it's faulty and all this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to reach up about and actually buy one. Um, and I'm going to wait until all this uh, bad flu season is uh, over. Hopefully it is over one of these fine days. And then, uh, much along the same line, buy the sort of electronic stepper motors and what have you that I need for doing a power feed on the end but I'm not in a great rush so for the meantime it's winding handles by hand well, this all looks pretty pretty
and a nice light cut the honing of the uh, of the tip and the oil seem to have contributed to it cutting nicer and of course I'm doing a much finer bead this time I'm starting to cut on the back edge or cut off on the back edge now no dramas I thought I was being a bit ambitious but it looks like I've got away with it No, without ambition, where would we be, eh? We wouldn't have been to the moon, that's for sure. And we wouldn't have invented metal cutting machines. So. I'll bring you back when it's finished. Hopefully it keeps on cutting as sweetly as this until I traverse right off the other end. Well, I managed to get to the other end just before my shoulder fell off from winding the handle. Um, yeah, I'm just super pleased with that. Um, yeah, I can't can't say any more than that. Um, I, I didn't expect it to come out that well. Okay, so happy days. <laughs> Time to machine round the outsides. So I've decided just to clean up the four sides first, so I know we're uh, you know somewhere in the ballpark. Just touch on there. Maybe another point one. There we go. Oh no, locked the wrong axis. <laughs> Yeah, clean up the four sides first, and then I'll look at getting them central about to the dowel hole. Um, you know, there may be occasions when I want to use the edge of the plate. Okay, need more of that one. I've done this front face, it took 0.15 to clean it up. So... This one is going to take a little bit more, I think. Let's take 0.25 off that face. I've just had a look around the back to make sure I'm going to miss the vice with the cutter, and yes, I have. <laughs> I wouldn't be a happy chappy if uh, I put that cutter into the back of the vice. Well, the vice wouldn't be happy choppy, and nor would the cutter, I wouldn't have thought. Okay, it's going to take more. So I'm glad I've done this. Wouldn't want to clean up one side to a sort of round figure and then find I've got to redo it afterwards. Radiuses on the corners so are there for a former life with the plate. I think I'll uh, I'll do something with those. Uh, whether I put a big chamber on or, or find a way to put a radius on, we shall see. One more cut. Just running out here. Okay, well, not to worry. Okay, that should do it. Let's uh, show it a little bit of care.
I could do is uh, finish these two faces off. I could stand it up in the vise. I think the two ends, it'll be a bit high up in the vise. I could drop it to an ankle plate, I suppose. Oh, now there's a bit of fun. Yeah. I think to get the sizes I want, I'm going to clamp it to an angle plate up on its side and use the end mill on it. Yes, I think that's what I'm going to do. You see, I'm making it up as I go along again. That's cleaned up that face. So I pretty much know so that back face and this face are square to each other and square to the tenon on the bottom of the vice. The top face, place, aha, the top face is flat to the tenon. So I think in the interests of just having some different setups, I think I will do that. I'm going to um, stop there and I'm going to set it up on an angle plate for a change of, yeah, just because I can really. Well, I think that's about enough for this one, guys. We'll see you all in part three. Won't be long, I promise. Cheers now.